Hi, this is Dr. Eric Dine coming at you from, um, uh, from ULAR 2022. I've been watching virtually with Room Now um, here in New Jersey uh, in the US. And, and I'm joined by Dr. Quillen Connolly, who's uh, a little bit south of me down at, at Johns Hopkins. Um, welcome, welcome and congratulations on your poster presentation. Hi, Dr. Dine. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Uh, so tell me a little bit about uh, about your poster presentation. This was poster 0256. Yeah, sure. So uh, this poster basically um, presents our findings from our study in which we evaluated um, rates of sero response in over a thousand patients with rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases after two dose mRNA or single dose JNJ vaccination. So initially, you know, we first looked at you know, rates of sero response. And then we looked at factors that could predict um, serial response so that we could identify patients at higher risk of not having an adequate vaccine response um, so that we could, you know, identify these people so that we could optimize their protection moving forward with additional um, strategies such as additional dosing or uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. Wonderful. And tell me, what, what were some of the um, risk factors for patients being zero negative, not, not having a good response. Sure, yeah, so the, the biggest factors that we identified were, first of all, the vaccine platform. We found that recipients of single shot J&J vaccine were far less likely to have a zero response. And then we found that patients treated with lymphocyte depleting agents like mycophenolate and rituximab, um, as well as glucocorticoids, were at higher risk of not having an adequate, um, or not having a zero response. Uh, furthermore, patients uh, with, uh, treated with combination therapy, so more than one immunosuppressive therapy, again, were at higher risk of not having um, zero response. So it all kind of comes together that, you know, the more immunosuppressed patients are, the higher the risk of not having a zero response. Another factor that we identified as, you know, being a risk for not having a zero response is uh, patients who did not withhold immunosuppression in the perivaccination period, again, we're more likely to not have a zero response. Mm -hmm. And glucocorticoid definitely seemed like one of the larger risks. Was that a certain dose that you found made a big difference or was it any, any dose of glucocorticoids? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, what we identified was that patients who were treated with glucocorticoids plus another agent were those at highest risk of uh, not having zero response, whereas those treated with monotherapy with glucocorticoids, uh, the risk was you know similar to to others. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think for a lot of our patients, we're probably going to be recommending a booster for for nearly everyone at this point who's far enough out. Um, how, how will this change the way you're you're counseling patients or, or discussing after they've had this initial uh, vaccination? Yeah, so I think what the sh study shows is that all of our patients uh, on immunosuppression require a third dose or to complete primary vaccination, which was a change that was made after, you know, we had completed this analysis and submitted the poster. Um, but it just shows that, you know, two dose vaccination with mRNA or um, single dose J and J is really insufficient for our, our immunosuppressed patients. So would really advocate for all of our patients to complete primary vaccination, um, that being three dose initial vaccination, and thereafter to get their uh, booster, which is fourth dose, um, and they're now eligible for a fifth dose, which would be their second booster. Yeah, I, I think, um, once again, just an excellent job. You, you've done really, really great stuff, really from the beginning with the Hopkins cohort of, of looking at um, which patients are, are responding and which patients are not responding. So this is a great poster. I know there's been a lot of information at, at ULR 2022 on similar studies. So um, I think all of this is just really helpful and, and very relevant for our patients. Uh, so thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. Uh, so lots more information coming uh, on Room Now. Uh, so check out all of, all of the uh, videos and interviews on there uh, and have a great rest of the conference.